HexCloud is one of my favorite open source projects. It's an awesome utility that you can host on the cloud that'll basically give you your own cloud. You'll be able to edit documents, store files, synchronize files, install all kinds of apps like basically a calendar, contacts, you name it. It's just a really awesome piece of software that I highly recommend that you check out. And in this video, I'm going to show you the process of setting up your very own Nextcloud server on Linode. Now you don't have to use Linode because you could use whatever your current provider happens to be, but I'll use Linode as an example. And then I'll show you the process of going through the installation. And we're basically going to install a database server, install Nextcloud itself, configure the web server. We're basically gonna do all of it. Now there are simpler and quicker methods to installing Nextcloud that I'm going to avoid. Mainly because, you know, you could use the snap package, which is actually pretty cool because it does all of that for you. But the problem is when I checked it out, it's actually very out of date. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install the latest version as of the time I'm recording this video. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here I am on the Linode dashboard and I created this instance right here, cleverly named Nextcloud. I created something with a little bit more horsepower. This one has four gigabytes of RAM, which, you know, I wanted something that's gonna be a little bit more comfortable. You could probably get away with Nextcloud on a smaller instance, but I wanted to have a decent amount of RAM and storage, which is kind of important with Nextcloud. So on whatever platform you're going to create your instance, whether it be Linode or VMware, VirtualBox, or whatever your provider happens to be, you just wanna make sure that you create it accordingly with the resources that you're going to need. And I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 LTS in this video. So that's basically what you'll need to use to follow along with me. But if you use something else, then you might need to adjust the commands accordingly. Now, if you are using Linode, I've already gone through and created a video that shows you the process of setting up your very own Linode. So if you haven't walked through the process of creating your own Linode instance yet, you can go ahead and check out that video because I'm going to assume that you already have an instance available. If I click on this instance right here, for example, we could see that I have my IP address right here. I'm gonna just click on this icon to copy it to the clipboard. And if you don't already have an instance, again, I have a video that outlines that process, but basically just go to create, create a Linode, then we're gonna show older instances and we're gonna use Ubuntu 18.04. Select a region closest to you. So I guess I'll just use Toronto, for example. And then here is where you choose basically the type or size of Linode that you would like to create. Make sure you pay special attention to the prices. There is a cost to run these servers. If you use the URL that's on the screen right now, then you'll be able to get a $20 credit towards your very own instance. So for example, you could just go here to this instance, $20 a month. You can just go ahead and use that URL to have that taken care of for you. But Basically, if you keep the instance past 30 days, just know that you will be billed for it. And if you create an instance that's above the $20 credit, you'll also be billed for that. I personally think Nextcloud is worth paying for. With that out of the way, I'm here on my terminal. I've already connected to that instance. But basically what I did was I just used SSH, root, at, and then the IP address of the instance to create a user you simply do add user jdo, for example, put in a password for that user, and I just press enter through all these screens. And then you're gonna do user mod dash a, it's a lowercase a, capital G, the group is sudo, and then your username, that's the username you wanna to add to the sudo group, that gives your user access to make administrative changes. But I've already done that on my end. You can see here I'm logged into my Linode instance and I'm good to go. Now the first thing you wanna do before you install any application, especially an application you're going to host that's gonna be internet facing, you're gonna to wanna to install all your security patches. So you could do sudo apt update. 
to make sure you have the mirrors updated here. And then you'll do sudo apt dist upgrade, just like that, to install the latest updates. And you can see that I have quite a few here. Again, if you create a server on a public cloud platform like Linode, it's internet facing. So you definitely want to have the latest packages. So I'll press enter. If you see a screen like this, you can just left arrow to yes and press enter. And as you can see here, we have the packages all updated and installed. Clear the screen. And to do a little bit of cleanup, I'll do sudo apt auto remove to remove any orphan packages. And I'll press enter. And now that's all set. So in order to take advantage of the updated packages, we do need to reboot the server. But before we do that, we just want to basically update the host name. Now this step is absolutely not required. You will have no issues whatsoever if you don't do this, but I recommend that you do it because, you know, it just says local host right here. And if we are managing multiple servers, we won't know which is which if they're all named that. So there's two files that we want to edit. So we're going to do sudo nano slash Etsy host name, just like that and press enter. And here we can see the name of the server itself. So I'm going to change it. And we could type the name of our server here. Now, I recommend that you get an actual domain name. That also is optional, but it's recommended. I already have a domain name, obviously, learnlinux.tv. And I'm going to name my server the same thing, or basically I'm going to use that domain name, but I'm going to use a subdomain. So I'm, I'm going to call mine nc learnlinux.tv. So basically just an abbreviation for Nextcloud, just keeping it simple, but it's nc.learnlinux.tv. You can name your server whatever you like. You don't actually need a domain name like I mentioned. You could call your server Potato, and I definitely won't judge you, but whatever you want to call it, just got to name it something. You could just simply name it Nextcloud if you don't have a domain. That's fine. And even if you do have a domain, it doesn't even have to match. I just like to make everything match. So again, I'll change it back to nc.learnlinux.tv and save the file. So with nano, it's control O, and then enter to save the file, and then control X to exit out. And then there's one more file we want to edit, slash etsy slash host, I'll press enter. And we have localhost here. We want to leave that. We don't want to change it, but we want to press enter underneath it. And we'll do 127.0.1.1. And we're going to do nc.learnlinux.tv. So this extra entry here makes sure that the local host is basically resolvable to local host itself or the nc.learnlinux.tv. Either one will work fine. Control O and enter and then Control X. So now that we've updated the packages and we've also updated the host name, we can reboot the server. I just do sudo reboot. Now press enter. So after some time, the server should reboot. Should only take a few minutes. You can basically just press the up arrow. You can SSH back into the server again. If it doesn't let you in, give it another minute and try again. Sometimes it takes a minute for it to come online. Let's go ahead and see if it's ready now. Looks like it. And we are back at the actual instance right here, we see NC in the name. It does abbreviate the main domain if I do host name just like that. We can see the actual host name. The actual host name has been set. So the next thing we want to do is actually download Nextcloud. How do we get it? So basically we're going to open a browser and we're going to navigate to nextcloud.com slash install which should bring you to a page that looks similar or exactly to this. We're going to click download for server. We're not going to click on it, but we're going to highlight over this download next cloud button. We're going to right click and copy link address or whatever your equivalent is, depending on what browser you're using. So now that we have the URL, we can use the wget utility to download it. And we simply paste the URL 
into our terminal. And you can see here it's downloading Nextcloud 16.0.4, which will most likely be different by the time you see this video, by the time it gets uploaded. But the process should not change. So I'll press Enter. And it's downloading Nextcloud to the server. And you can see here, here is Nextcloud. So that's basically the zip file that contains everything we need to run the application itself, but we need to set up a few services that Nextcloud requires in order to run. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now, first of all, we're going to need to install MariaDB. That's the database server. So I'll do sudo apt install mariadb-server. Enter, password, and it's gonna download the database server as, long as, as, as well as its prerequisites here. So enter again. So now the database server is installed. We can check the status. System CTL status MariaDB. We can see that it is active and running. So next we need to basically set up the security for MariaDB. So we're gonna do sudo mysql secure installation. And yeah, I know it's MariaDB, not mysql, but a lot of the commands are interchangeable. So I'll press enter here. And it says, enter the current root password. Well, we don't actually have one because we haven't yet set one. So you'll just press enter for none because we don't have one. Set root password. So the Y is capital. So if we could pro press Y or just enter. If we just press enter, it accepts the default, which is whichever one is capital. So enter. And we're going to set a root password here. Re-enter it. Remove anonymous users. Enter for the default of yes. Disallow root login remotely. Absolutely, there is never a reason to have a public facing database server. So definitely enter for yes. Remove test database and access to it. Yes, enter again. And reload privilege tables. Yes, enter. And that's basically it. We set the root password for the database server here. You do wanna make a note of that so that way you know, you don't forget it because, uh, you know, it's really hard to break back into a database server if you forget the password. Hopefully you set it to something really secure. So I'll clear the screen. So here at the terminal, we want to connect to the MariaDB shell. So we're going to do sudo MariaDB. That'll just get us right into the database server as root. Press enter. And you can see that our command prompt has changed to MariaDB. So we're able now to set up our database. So to create our database, we're gonna use this command, create database next cloud, and we're gonna end it with a semicolon. Now, create database is in caps, it doesn't need to be, it's just considered proper syntax to put SQL instructions in all caps, but that's not required, but that's what we're gonna do here. And then the database name is simply going to be next cloud, I'll press enter. And then we could do show databases to ensure that the database itself has been created and we can see that it has. Clear the screen. So next what we're going to do is create a new user account. And this user account is actually specific to the database. This is the user account that Nextcloud will use to authorize into the database to allow it to make changes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paste the command in because I'm too lazy to type it all out. But I'll walk you through this. Basically, we're gonna grant all privileges on nextcloud. Asterisk, which means basically the nextcloud database and pretty much everything underneath it. We're gonna grant those permissions to a user by the name of nextcloud that's gonna be located at localhost, identified by, and then the password, my password. For this, you want to definitely use something more secure than what I'm using. Since this is a test instance, I don't really care because I'm gonna be deleting this instance as soon as I'm done recording. But for you, I do recommend that you use a randomly generated password and you put that in the quotes here. Pay special attention to if your password that you're generating has quotes in it, which is gonna confuse it. Just keep that in mind and make sure you keep track of that password though because we're actually going to need it here in a minute. So press enter. 
and it basically says query OK. So that means that the next cloud user was created and given permission to the entire database. Next, what we're going to do is flush privileges, which is just basically going to synchronize all the user access, which is a good idea since we just created a user. Enter. And after that, we can hold Control and press D to disconnect from the MariaDB shell. So now we have a database server. We also need a web server because NextCloud is completely useless without a web server to serve it. So what I'm going to do right now is show you which packages you'll need to install in order to satisfy that requirement. So next, we're going to install some required packages for PHP. I'll go ahead and paste them in here right now. And then you can go ahead and pause the screen if you need to. I'll also have these instructions on the wiki page as well, so if you want to copy and paste the command from there, you may. And you're going to notice that these are all PHP packages. And we're not actually installing the web server yet, but I'm going to go ahead and press Enter. So you'll see that Apache is actually listed as one of the packages that will be installed. It's being installed as a prerequisite. You'll want to make sure that it shows up in the list here. If it does not, you'll want to also install that as well, along with all the other packages. So I'll press Enter to go ahead and install these. Those packages are installed. So to make sure everything is good, we're going to do system CTL status Apache 2. We see that it is running. Shows that right here. We also show that it's enabled. That means that Apache will start when the server reboots. That's important. So we want to make sure that that's the case. If it's not, you could do sudo system CTL enable Apache 2 to make sure that it comes on when the server reboots. And you can also do start Apache 2 to make sure that it starts. We want to do the same thing with MariaDB. It's active running, and it's also enabled. We can also use the same systemctl command, so sudo systemctl start MariaDB, or enable, you can change start to enable, same thing there. Just basically want to make sure both of those are running and that they are enabled. Now what I recommend you do at this point is sudo systemctl restart Apache 2. You probably don't need to do that, but we did install Apache 2 along with a lot of these uh, PHP packages. It's always possible that you know Apache might not have been started with support for PHP. I highly doubt that, but just to be on the safe side, you can go ahead and press enter and that'll restart that service. Now, we have NextCloud downloaded right here, 16.0.4.zip. Your version number might be different. We need to unzip this first, so we'll use unzip, next cloud, or whatever the package name is. This is going to fail in my case because unzip is not installed. That can be installed by default depending on your image, but if, the, if you see this error like I see right here, you just do sudo apt install unzip. And it's going to install that for us. We could do which unzip, and we could see that unzip is now an option. So now, if I recall the unzip command, it should work this time. It's going to basically explode it into a bunch of files. We see we have a Nextcloud directory here. And what we're going to do is rename it. Now, this is a little bit different than Many other articles and how-tos will have you do it. This is just a personal preference, but I think this makes sense, especially if you plan on hosting other sites on this instance. We're going to move that file and change the name of it. And I always change the directory to be named after the domain. So I'll do nc.learnlinux.tv. We can see we have that directory right here. So now what we're going to do is change the ownership of that directory. So we're going to do sudo chown. And the user we want to now own it is going to be www-data colon www-data. So that's a user and group of the same name. We also want to add the dash r option here so it's recursive. We're going to change the ownership to that directory right there. 
Then if we check the listing of storage here, we can see that it's owned by www.data, user, and group, which is required for the web server to have the appropriate access to that directory. Now we still have the Nextcloud zip file, so you could actually just remove it if you want. I don't really think it hurts to keep it around if you need to reinstall it for whatever reason, but that's up to you. I'm not going to remove it. But what I am gonna do is do sudo mv for move, and I'm gonna move this directory to slash var slash www. Now if I list the storage of that directory, we can see that we have that directory right there. I'll clear the screen. Now one thing we can do is make sure that Apache itself is working first. And to do that, we can open a browser. And then we can paste the IP address of our server right here. And you can see we're getting an Apache 2 default page. So Apache is working, which is basically required for the next step to work. We're going to change this, but this is just basically the sample page. Back to the terminal. Let's take a look at slash Etsy. Apache 2 sites enabled. And we see this default configuration file right here. That's the default site. We're not going to be using that anymore. So we'll use sudo a2 dis site, which stands for Apache 2 disable site. And we're going to disable the 000 default.conf. And it's telling us we need to reload Apache, so let's do that. Okay, so what we're going to do now, if we do ls-l slash etsy apache2 sites enabled, we see that there are no sites enabled right now. What we're going to want to do though is create a new configuration file for Apache. This will be the configuration file for Nextcloud itself. So we're going to do sudo nano slash etsy apache2 sites available nc.learnlinux.tv.conf or whatever you called your domain, you'll just name yours accordingly. But I'll press enter and this is a blank file. We're creating a brand new configuration file for Apache. So what I'm gonna do is paste the content in here and you're going to want to adapt this file for your domain. You'll notice that I have this domain in here several times. In fact, you'll see that the nc.learnlinux.tv is listed in this file five times. So you need to change five occurrences of that domain to match whatever yours happens to be. You'll also need to make sure that these paths line up to whatever path you saved your content in. If you did something different than me, you'll see that I basically created this nc.learnlinux.tv I created it under slash var slash www, which, you know, a lot of people will go under the HTML directory. I don't do that. I just like to have dedicated folders for each site, especially if I'm going to host multiple sites on one server. But basically take a minute to take a look at this. And again, it's going to be in the wiki article, which will be linked in the show notes below. If you want to copy this example into your text editor to change it before you paste it. So I'll save it and then exit out. Now we're gonna to need to restart Apache to take advantage of this new configuration. And we're also going to need to enable this configuration as well, but I'm not going to do that yet. There's one more thing we should do. So here I'm on my account on Hover, which is my DNS provider. So I recommend that you go to the console of whatever your DNS provider happens to be. You don't absolutely need this, but it's just, it just makes it that much easier. And what you want to do is add a record, specifically an A record, pointing to the IP address of your instance. So I'll click over here to add an A record. The host name is going to be nc because it's nc.learnlinux.tv in my case. So that's basically the subdomain you'll put there. And then here you'll put the IP address of your Linode instance, or whatever your provider might happen to be, they gave you an IP address, you'll paste that in there, and then you'll add the record. It can take some time for that DNS record to propagate everywhere, so it may or may not be resolvable right away. But what you can do to check is just open a new terminal. I'll blow up the text size here. 
and I'm going to do ns lookup nc.learnlinux.tv and press enter. You can see in my case that it is already resolvable. So Hover is pretty quick. They are my favorite DNS provider. They are not a sponsor. I just actually happen to like them. But you know, if anyone from Hover wants to become a sponsor, let me know. Um, I'm kidding, but, or am I? Hover is great, seriously. So if you don't have a DNS provider, they are a good one. You could get their domain, your domain from them, and then you can go ahead and set up your subdomain as well, all in one place. They don't offer hosting, but that doesn't matter because you can use Linode or another VPS provider to provide the hosting. So you don't actually need them for that, but they are a really good provider for DNS. So you can see here that I was able to get that IP address associated with my subdomain nc.learnlinux.tv. So you just basically wanna make that happen for your domain. Back here at the terminal, we're gonna to want to enable the site. So we'll do sudo a2 n site. We'll do nc, we can usually tab complete. So there's the configuration file, I'll press enter. We could run this command right here to reload Apache to basically make sure that this change takes effect. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna clear the screen first. Now we'll need to configure PHP to ensure that it's set up properly. So we're gonna do this right here, sudo nano slash etsy php and so on. Basically it's a php.ini file. We need to edit that file to ensure that PHP is configured properly. So I'll press enter. Now I have a list of all the edits that need to be made in the wiki article. But to save some time, we could just do control W which allows us to search. The first one we want to search for is memory underscore limit. Press enter. We're gonna change this to 512 megabytes. Should have more than enough RAM on our instance for this. Next, we need to configure the upload max file size. We'll do search for upload. We should be able to just search for upload underscore max. Should take us right to it. There it is. So this is just the biggest possible file that you can upload to your instance. Um, we could just change it to say 200 is fine. But if you plan on uploading files larger than that, of course you need to adjust that accordingly. Next, search for max execution time, but we could just simply search for that to find it. And there it is. We're gonna change that to 360. Next, control W again, we'll search for post max, change that to 200, just do, see, date dot time zone. We're gonna uncomment this. If you don't know what your time zone uh, values could be, you can go to this URL, but I'll show you mine, for example. It's America slash Detroit. Again, you can get yours from there. We're gonna do control O and then enter, and then we're gonna exit. So now we need to enable several Apache plugins, actually six in total. So again, you can get these commands from the wiki article, but I'm just gonna go ahead and go through them. Feel free to pause the video as necessary if I go too fast. So first we're gonna do sudo a2n mod. That's the command you can use to enable a Apache extension, also known as a module. We're going to enable rewrite and press enter. We're going to ignore the verbiage for restarting Apache for now. And we're gonna go ahead and enable the next mod. And the next one is called headers and env for environment, which in my case is already enabled, so that's fine. Enable dir, also already enabled. Mime, again already enabled, but we just wanna make sure. And we also want to enable SSL as well. Clear the screen. And then we will this time restart Apache. There we go. So now we're gonna see if Nextcloud actually works. We're not gonna configure it just yet. There's one more thing we have to do, but we do wanna see if we are successful so far. So I'll switch to a browser. And here we are from the previous page. This is the default page. But what we wanna do is back out the IP address here and type in our domain name. So let's see if that works. And press enter. And it looks good to me, but there's one problem, it's not secure. So we're not gonna go through and set this up just yet. We wanna take care of this right here 
and make sure that we have everything secure. We don't want to see something that says not secure. We want to secure our site. And we're going to use Let's Encrypt to accomplish that. So first of all, we want to install the required packages for CertBot, which is what Let's Encrypt uses. Now CertBot is available in the Ubuntu repositories last I checked, but we don't want to install that version. We want to actually install the PPA. So I'll paste in the command to do that which you see right here. I'll press enter. And it just basically wants me to confirm. Press enter to continue, so I'll do that. All right, so the repository is installed. To confirm that, we'll do ls etsy apt sources.list.d. We can see that the certbot list file is there, and if you're curious, I'll show you the contents of that file, which is basically just the URL to that repository. Now CertBot, the package, is available in Ubuntu proper, and the reason why we want this repository to override Ubuntu's version is because this version will be more up-to-date. That's extremely important. We don't want to fall back on Ubuntu's version. We want it straight from this PPA repository. So next we can install the actual CertBot package itself which is going to be this command right here. Go ahead and pause the screen if you need to, but I'll press enter. Going to be a handful of dependencies here, so we'll go ahead and let all of those install. And there we go. So now we can actually get an SSL certificate for our site. I'll paste in the command to do that, which is this one right here. You'll need to adjust for your domain accordingly. And this domain absolutely must resolve. If it doesn't and your DNS hasn't fully propagated, then this will fail. You basically want to make sure all steps up to now have completed successfully. I know mine has, so I'll press enter. It wants me to enter an email address, which I will go ahead and enter in right now. And this is just a test instance that I'm going to be blowing away. So I'm not actually going to put in a real email, but you really should though, because if you have any problems with this renewing, they will send you a notice and that's extremely important to keep on top of. Otherwise your site might break. So you definitely do want to put in a real email address here. And I will do A for agree. And I'll say, no, I'm not willing to share my email address. <laughs> you know, that's just a test email. So. Don't want to confuse them, so I'll press enter for no. So it looks like that was successful, and we need to choose whether or not to redirect non-SSL to SSL. I recommend that you do actually do that. It's option number two for redirect. I'll put in number two right here and press enter. We should be good to go. Let's see. So here we have the Nextcloud site in my browser. It's not secure, so if I refresh the page, it actually should be secure. So let's see what happens. And we have the padlock icon right here, and it tells me that my connection is secure, and that's awesome. So here I'm going to create an admin account. So I'll just use my first name here. And I don't care that the password is weak, since I'm going to be deleting this shortly. But in your case, if you plan on keeping this, this around, you really should make sure that you have a very strong password here, because believe me, people will definitely be trying to crack it. Now we have an option for data folder. It defaults to, go ahead and arrow over here. So underneath the main parent directory, it's defaulting over to data. Now, if you have a secondary volume, like block storage or a mounted hard drive or something like that, you'll want to change this to that folder. I'm going to leave this as default, but you basically want to make sure that www-data, the user we changed ownership before, has access to that directory. I'm going to leave that one alone. Scrolling down here, database user, we used Nextcloud. For password, I used my password. Hopefully you used something a lot more secure than that, and the database name was simply Nextcloud. 
And then just double check all of these settings and ensure that everything is perfect and then click finish setup. And the suspense is building. And would you look at that, we have a successful Nextcloud installation. How awesome is that? So we get this little handy notice right here. Looks like uh, some kind of information. It's been a while since I've seen it. I actually haven't seen this version yet, but it's given us some information. And now we have our actual Nextcloud installation. So we can configure that and we can install apps as well. So I'll go over here to apps. Let's check out some of the applications that are available to us. So we have a PDF viewer, for example, draw.io integration, which is awesome. I actually do use that site for diagrams, so that's pretty cool. We can enable end-to-end -end encryption, but that's untested. There's an ebook reader. So if you have a lot of ebooks, that could be something that would benefit you as well. And then we have extract plugins. We have, let's see, Office and Text. We have Office integration that we can add, all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely check this out. There's all kinds of things that you can enable. And if you want to create users, you just go up here to users. If you want to create a new person here, we just click on new user, J Doe, and I'll just go ahead and put in the user, password, and go ahead and select that. And we successfully created a new user. So we could add friends, family, coworkers, whatever it is uh, you're using this for, you could add your users accordingly. So there you go, guys. That was my walkthrough for installing Nextcloud on Linode or whatever your hosting provider happens to be. Nextcloud is an amazing piece of software. I absolutely love it. I highly recommend that you check it out. You could even sync your phone, calendar, and contacts to it to basically have your open source cloud for a lot of the same purposes that you would use proprietary solutions for. So there you go. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Go ahead and leave some comments down below on what you plan on using your Nextcloud server for. And then I'll go ahead and get started on creating more tutorials for you guys. So stay tuned and I will have those uploaded very soon. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.